Welcome to Craft Abilities. My name is Terrell and I'm here with Patrice. So Patrice, what are we making today? So today we're going to be making some hall passes because we are about to start another school year. And Girl! And so we need new hall passes. So I'm really excited about doing this project. I usually make cute little gifts with these. These are mini cutting boards and I got these from off of Amazon. Today we are going to turn these into hall passes and we're going to do that by burning them. So we're going to get like kind of like an engraved effect, but we're actually going to be burning some wood. So today we're going to be using these wooden paddles and you want to make sure if you're doing anything like this that they're sanded. You want it to be nice and smooth. We will be using our Cricut maker to get this done. Also, you want to make sure that you have some removable vinyl, which is going to just be your stencil. Okay, so this is going to be a stencil. So we need to have removable vinyl. Also, we need heat guns. Now, generally I use this type of heat gun, a larger heat gun to get it done. But I do want to try it with my smaller heat gun to see if it will work also. Because why get this huge thing if this one will do? Today, this is the first time that I'm using this. I usually use a different formula, different uh, materials to get it done. But today we're going to be using for the first time torch paste. And this, you don't have to mix anything with this, um, with this chemical or whatever it is, but we're gonna see. So this is the first time that I'm gonna be using that. In addition, I have a little paintbrush that Terrell found for us to apply the, the paste to the stencil. I found it in her purse, it's her makeup uh, purse. You did not find this in my purse. <laughs> and then of course I'm just going to be placing the vinyl on some on a standard grip mat all right the last thing you need is transfer tape to get this done so we are about to get prepared we're going to head over to Cricut Design Space in a few so that we can get our stencil cut all right guys, so before we head over to Cricut, before you do any project and before you make anything, you always wanna make sure that you know the size of your blank. So I'm just going to measure the height and the width of our cutting board. So it's about three and a half inches wide. And I'm just gonna measure from the top part to here. So that way I'll know what size I need to make the design until so about six and a half inches high. Okay, so three and a half by six and a half. Of course, my template isn't gonna be that large. But I do want it to fit in the center, okay? So let's now head over to Cricut Design. Okay, y'all, so now we're going to get ready to design our stencil. And I'm going to start by creating a rectangle so that I'll know the amount of space that I need to, to create the template in. So we're just going to resize the square I selected the square by selecting the shapes option on the left side. I am then going to head up to the top panel and I am going to unlock the proportions button underneath size. For the width, we want this to be six and a half. So I'm gonna put 6.5 and for the height, three and a half. Now that I have this size, I can start creating the template because I know I don't wanna go larger than this. So I'm going to select the text option on the left side and we will be typing call pass. So next I want to change the font and so I'm going to select the text and then at the top I'm going to drop down the font option. I will be using a system font today and I am going to look for impacts because I want a very nice thick font. So I have impact selected, and as you see, that automatically changed the font for us. Now what I wanna do is I wanna reduce some of that space inside, and we can do that by selecting the line spacing option at the top, or we can just simply ungroup. And now I have everything ungrouped. All of those letters are now individual letters, and I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. I will weld that together. So I'm going to click combine and weld. And then I'm going to do the same thing for 
pass. Now that I have both of those, now that I have it welded, I want to center, haul, and pass. So I'm going to select both. And I'm going to hit to the top, expand a line, and then we're going to center horizontally. So that just makes sure that it's centered. Now I'm going to select both. And we are then going to just weld that together also. I will be changing the color to yellow just so that we can see it a little bit better. It does not matter. Okay, and then I'm just going to resize Hall Pass a little bit so that we can fit it. I'm also going to unlock it and we're just going to fit it here in our template. Okay, so next I want to create more text. So I'm going to select text and I want to put my name in there. So we're going to type in Miss Wilson. And I'm going to change that font. I'm going to use another system font. And we're going to use absolutely silent. It is a thinner font, but we can totally make it work. So I'm just going to bring call pass out. And then I want Miss Wilson to kind of go right here in between. All right, so what I do want to do first, I want to go ahead and ungroup this. So I'm going to right click ungroup. Now I have everything ungrouped. I want to move Wilson over a little bit closer to Miss. And then I'm going to select all of the text again. And we are going to, we're going to weld it. And here I'm just showing you other ways where you can access some of the features. Okay, so that is welded. I need to unlock it again. And I'm just going to stretch it out just a little bit more. All right, y'all. So now we're going to get ready to create a few offsets. So I need to create an offset around the word Wilson. And because we're going to be using a stencil, I need it to really pop out. So I want to create a small offset around Miss Wilson that's going to thicken that thin font up a little bit. And so we're going to go with a 0 0.02 and we want to see how that's going to look. Okay. And I'm going to click apply. It's a very thin, if you guys notice, that looks very thin and I can still tell what the word is. And those letters still look like the letters that they're supposed to be. We're going to turn that purple and then that is going to be the new word. As you see, it thickened it up quite a bit and this works really good with thin fonts. And so I'm just going to put Miss Wilson here and I also want to create another offset around Wilson. So I just want this to go exactly where I want it to be and I want it to be about right here. And then I'm going to select offset again and then I'm going to change that offset to a 0 0.05. And let's see. Okay, so I think I like that. And I'm going to click apply. Now that I have the other offset, and that's really just so that we can knock out the word from hall pass, I'm going to select everything. I'm going to select hall pass and the word Miss Wilson. Now, this is going to work because hall pass is welded together. If hall pass was separate, it would not work the way that we want it to work. I wanted to knock Miss Wilson out of both hall and pass at the same time. And so that works best when you're only using two images. Okay, so hall pass right here is considered two images because it's welded together. And then Miss Wilson, because that's welded together and it's the offset, that's considered one image also. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to go to combine and we're just gonna select subtract. And that's going to remove Miss Wilson from Hall Pass. And you want to make sure that that word that you want to remove is on top of the other words. Now that we have that done, I'm just going to go ahead and place Miss Wilson there. And that's how our stencil is going to look. So I'm going to select both Hall Pass and Miss Wilson. And we're just going to place it here. In the template, and I'm gonna now select all pass and Miss Wilson. We're gonna tur turn that into one color, and we can actually weld that together. So we're gonna select here, and then we're gonna select all pass, and then I am going to 
put combine and we're going to weld that together. All right, that's all welded together. And now you see we just have two images on the side. We have the square and then we have the weld result image, which is the hall pass and Miss Wilson. I'm going to go ahead and select both of those. And then I'm going to select combine also again, and then we're going to just subtract it. Okay, and so now this is our stencil. We can go ahead and print this out. This would work also if you're doing screen printing or anything like that. This would work the same because you're just creating the stencil. All right, so now we're going to get ready to click make it. We will be printing this from our Cricut Maker. We're going to select make it. And this is how it's going to go. So the material that we're going to use is going to be just regular removable vinyl. All right, guys. So now we're going to place our vinyl onto a standard grip cut-in mat. And we're going to then cut our stencil out. That vinyl looks like it's seen better days. Yeah, that's why it's good to use like vinyl that you don't need anymore. All right, so we have it here. We're going to get ready to head over to our Cricut. All right, guys, so now we're at our Cricut Maker, and this is the original Maker, and we're ready to cut our vinyl. All right, y'all, so now we're ready to put it through. So now we just need to weed it. All right, guys, so we're all done. And now I'm going to remove the vinyl from the cutting mat. Now, one thing you, you want to make sure that you don't really have any air bubbles or air pockets like we have here, but this is older um, vinyl. And so sometimes that does happen, but we're going to remove it. And the best way to remove any vinyl is to actually remove the cutting mat from the material. Why you do this is so that you don't lift up your cut design unnecessarily. Now Patrice is just going to cut the vinyl to make it a little smaller and easier to weed. Alright guys, so now we're going to get ready to weed our stencil. And with the stencil, you're weeding everything else or everything that you typically would not weed. Okay, so first I'm just gonna go ahead and weed around our bounding box and just remove that. And then I want to remove all of the insides. So we're gonna start with the H and then just weed from there. So we're done with weeding out our stencil. And as you see, all of the insides of the stencil has been weeded out. The only thing you have to be concerned about are the tiny pieces that can be a little difficult at time to keep up with and to not uh, lift off. But you just, I mean, some small parts, I'm just like, you know what, bye. But it's okay. So we're gonna take this Cricut transfer mask or transfer tape and lift this up and you want to do this you don't want to use the strong grip mat or the strong grip transfer tape you want to use the lighter transfer tape i got tape on here so i am going to kind of lift it up and just drop it down on top and I'm gonna get my squeegee and brush, brush, brush. Squeegee, squeegee, squeegee. Oh. <laughs> and you want all of that stencil to stick. And this transfer tape is a little bit smaller than what what I need. If you see, like this part is not does not have any transfer tape on it, but I'm I'm fine with that. So I'm just going to flip it over and remove the backing. And now we have it 
transfer it on top and we can apply it to the wood. So whether you use this type of wood or another type of wood for another project, you want to make sure that it is sanded and that there's nothing there that will prevent your transfer from sticking. So I'm just going to place this exactly where I want it to go on the, on the board. All right, so we have it on here. And I'm just going to kind of help it stay down a little bit. And then we are going to move the transfer tape. But if you saw, I kind of lifted it up, but it might not really be that stuck there, but it's okay. So I'm just going to remove the transfer mask by pulling down. You don't want to pull up. You want to do it slowly by pulling it down. So if you're planning on doing this on the other side of your board, you can just go ahead and keep the same transfer tape so that you can use it for the other cut. We're just gonna be doing this now on one side for now. But you can always decorate the other side with something else uh, if you have something else to put on there. Okay, so now we are going to open up the torch paste and it says that this is the easy way to burn wood. I'm thinking maybe I should put on some gloves nah, to nah, do this. Nah, nah. You just want me to burn my hand if I want to burn my hand. We'll see. But you might want to put on gloves. I don't usually put on gloves for things, but you may want to put on gloves. Gloves are for amateurs. All right, so this is what the paste looks like. And it's it is gooey. Torch paste, okay? And so the directions say you apply a thin layer of paste to the stencil with a squeegee on sanded wood. You remove the excess paste and we need to let it dry for two to three minutes. All right, once we let it dry, we're then going to... Light it on fire. No, we're not gonna light on fire. We're gonna remove the, the stencil. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna use this brush because that's what Terrell got for us to use I'm today. just gonna lightly apply the paste to the stencil area. Especially, you wanna make sure you get that wood that's exposed. And it doesn't have to be globbed on there. But you wanna make sure you get all of the areas exposed. So that's why it's important to make sure that it's squeegee down. Um, because you don't want there to be any air bubbles. And the problem with sometimes doing it with brushes like this is that the brush, the bristles can go underneath the vinyl and you don't really want that. So you just want to be very careful and I'm just dabbing it on top. I'm not really trying to brush, brush it in. I'm just dabbing it on top. So now I have everything coated and you don't want it globbed on, so you do want to make sure that you remove any of the excess torch paste on. But now I'm just going to let this sit for about two minutes, and then we're going to remove the stencil. Okay, y'all, so we are all done with letting this kind of dry, and it's time to remove the stencil. It's been on here for about four, four to five minutes. So now we're just going to remove this and I don't want it to like fall any places where it shouldn't. So I'm gonna try to be very careful removing it. And I don't have on any gloves, but I do suggest that you wear, you wear gloves. Cause you just don't know. All right, I'm just gonna use my weeding pen to kind of help me lift 
all of those hard to get parts up. Alright guys, so now we're all done with applying the torch paste and removing the removable vinyl so that we can hit this with some heat. So remember we're going to test out two heat guns, well we're going to test out the first heat gun, the smaller one, to see if that will work. If not, we'll move on to the bigger heat gun. Alright y'all, so we're going to be using this mini heat gun to get this done. You want to make sure that your heat gun can get up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit if you're doing this project. I would also recommend using some heat gloves, uh, but we can't find our heat gloves. So I'm just going to start applying heat to the wood, but you don't want to leave the heat in one area, so you want to move it around. I think I may have to do the other one. Yeah, this is not... No. All right, guys, so this is a no for now. <laughs> Let me get the other heat gun. So we had to grab the bigger heat gun. The smaller one just wouldn't get hot enough. And as you can see, Patrice is heating up the wood, moving it side to side, not concentrating on one place. She's just going back and forth, moving the gun around, heating up the wood. And as you can see, it's slowly starting to change color. This whole process takes about four to five minutes. And when you are done, it creates a very nice product. All right, y'all. So we are all done with our hall pass. Now, there are a few things that you may want to do after you're done burning it. I do see that we have a little bit of scorch marks around here, meaning like we might have overdid burning it a little bit. So if you get that, you can just go ahead and kind of give the entire board a distressed look if you want. Also, you could go through and just sand it down a bit if you want to like just sand it a little bit if you want to remove some of that. In addition, you can apply a wood sealer to the top coat, to the top part of it, and it will protect it. All right, so I think it came out good. Terrell overdid it with continuing to just scorch it but it came out great and it was actually very easy to do so i could totally give this to my students for hall passes also if you want to decorate the other side if you wanted to put another stencil on the other side you can or if you just want to paint the other side maybe in your school colors you can do that also but this was a fun quick and easy way to make a hall pass and Honestly, you can do this method on any type of wood or most types of wood.